That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Nandor Fodor and the Talking Mongoose, the fifth film, I believe, directed by Adam Seagal, uh, which Saban Films is releasing September 1st, 2023. Do you know Adam's other films? No, uh, but his last film from 2022 called Chariot uh, features Thomas Mann, the actor, not the author, and uh, John Malkovich. Do, uh, no relation to Steven Seagal. It's S-I-G-A-L. Oh, okay. So not... Good. Not the... That obnoxious person. Okay, the premise of this film. In 1935, Hungarian-American parapsychologist Nandor Fodor began his investigation of a strange occurrence on the Isle of Man. An average British family, the Irvings, claimed to have been contacted by a mysterious entity at their farm a talking mongoose named Jeff. Uh, my pull quote? Mm. I was hoping for more of a psychological thriller revolving around a scientist who descends into madness. Instead, Nandor Fodor and the talking mongoose feels like a sparse dark comedy adapted from a children's book hobbled by a grating lead performance. Mm. I agree. What's yours? A dry exploration of a bizarre account regarding a talking mongoose feels like a wasted opportunity in its wan explorations of existential yearning. Yeah. <laughs> I guess just the story. So Simon Pegg plays Nandor Fodor, mm -hmm. Dr. Fodor. And like an OG Ghostbuster. Yeah, basically. And his assistant... Anne, played by Minnie Driver... He receives letters from people wanting him to, like, in investigate experiences they're having. So in the opening of the film, we see Minnie Driver's character reading him letters, and he's not interested until he comes across the story of a talking mongoose. And he sees that the letter uh, was written by another scientist, played by Christopher Lloyd. Dr. Harry Price. So, of course, that piques his interest. He goes to meet uh, Dr. Price. Mm-hmm. And Christopher Lloyd's character says, like, yeah, girl, I went out here and tried to investigate. I never saw the mongoose, but I heard it. And Simon Pegg's character is like, okay, well, here's all my research. I really think you should go out there and check it out. So he agrees. To so the Isle of Man. So Simon and uh, Minnie go out to the Island of Man. And it's very obvious right away that something's not right. We can assume that this community is, I mean, it's a hoax. Yeah. But everything culminates with one, they are able to produce the mongoose like in a box, but it's very, it, it doesn't seem real. Simon gets upset. Then that night he's at a bar drinking with Minnie and she's like, well, I believe in Jeff, the talking mongoose. And he gets really mad. Cut to him, drunk, 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 saying, take me to the Irving's house where the mongoose usually resides. He brings a big mallet and he a starts... A sledgehammer. A sledgehammer. And he starts tearing shit up and they throw his ass in jail after they knock him out. Mm -hmm. When he wakes up in the jail cell, Jeff is talking to him and we hear Jeff's voice a lot in the film. Oh, the Neil Gaiman is the voice. Which I actually thought was kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Fodor has a like... I guess what you would want to call a nervous breakdown, saying, like, please, you need to help me understand that you're real. And, and it's because Jeff said, I know what your dad said to you right before he died. And that's that's what got him hooked. Which we need to talk about, because mm -hmm. a couple of other characters share stories that force them to believe in Jeff. Mm -hmm. But finally, Dr. Fodor is like, if you're not going to show me, your, like, show yourself to me, like, I'll put my arm out of the jail cell and just, like, scratch it. And he does. So now Dr. Fodor believes. So he calms down and says, I'm just going to go back home. So when he goes back home, some time has passed and he meets up with Dr. Price, Christopher Lloyd's character. And what I thought was a really clunky scene, which basically culminates with this scientist, this parapsychologist, psychologist, saying that the most profound question he was ever asked was actually by Jeff. So now he's acknowledging to Dr. Price that he met Jeff. And the question that was so profound to him is, what if there's nothing after we die? Which 
I mean, that sent me. Like, really, this scientist has never pondered this question. But then because of that, he starts thinking, well, maybe us as scientists are not so different from the Irvings and this community in that they want to be remembered for something. So like how scientists publish their research because they want to be remembered, these people were doing this so that they could be remembered. So even if Jeff is not real, there's still value in it. The end. But the final shot of the film is we see, like, on the Isle of Man, we see a mongoose standing in the hills. Mm -hmm. to, to further the ambiguity of... To further the ambiguity. Wh whether Jeff was a hoax or not. Although m most people logically believe that this was a hoax. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just and you're leaving out something very glaring and sus: it, the fact that the Irving's daughter is a talented ventriloquist. Well, let's just. I'm gonna go through my notes. The film opens with the history of talking animals, which is mainly birds, <laughs> but then we do get a section where it's like other creatures mimic like human sounds, like how cats seem like they're mimicking us, or turtles moaning when they have sex. I thought that was a fun start. Cats, beavers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so the grading lead performance. Simon Pegg as this Austrian-American, or Hungarian, I'm sorry, Hungarian-American uh, individual. First of all, I thought his accent was just, like, really interesting. It's interesting. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think it's just fine, but there are other times where he's talking in this a fashion that if I close my eyes, he sounded like John Malkovich to me. Yes, and then Mini Driver, to me, at times sounded like Gal Gadot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that she's my... If I had to pick a favorite part of this film, it would be Minnie Driver, who I thought looked really good. Sure. Uh, and she has the best scene in the film. Which we'll talk about. But yeah, Simon Pegg is playing this character, or this character is written, I guess, to be very skeptical, but in a very obvious way. Everything about this story is so obvious, which makes me think it feels like a children's book. Mm -hmm. Except that it's missing... What this movie's missing that you would find in a children's book is an examination of why... If this is a hoax, why that's bad? Why hoaxes are dangerous? Why right. why Piltdown Man was a dangerous hoax in discovering the missing link when we actually never discovered it at all? Like, and you brought up a good example of what I wanted this to feel like, which is the movie Red Lights with Sigourney Weaver and Robert De Niro, mm -hmm. where she's a scientist trying to debunk Robert De Niro, who's like a mentalist type person. It just... He's just so overtly skeptical and grouchy and then it, it's slightly comedic that in a way that did not work for me. Yeah, I, I agree. There is, uh, the Irvings have a man, Errol, played by Gary Beadle, uh, who works on the estate. And right away he tells Simon Pegg, like, he's like, there ain't no Jeff. This black man, yeah, who tells Simon, you, you know as well as I do, there's no Jeff. But the discussion that eventually ensues after we see supposed evidence of Jeff in the barn where you see like parts of fur moving around in a box uh, where Earl, Errol says uh, you, should let, you should just let people believe in what they want to believe in. And the script, as you said right after we watched it, isn't sophisticated enough to really deal with the ripple effects of uh, living life that way. <laughs> But that's why this movie is such a miss for me because there, it's ripe with really interesting conversation and what could have left me... Like, at the end of this movie, I didn't care if Jeff was real or not. I don't even want to ponder if Jeff was real. But it, had this been done correctly, I, I would have... Like, we could have had a really interesting discussion about Jeff. Well, it should be leading you into desiring... Us also desiring that, God, wouldn't it be wonderful if this thing did exist? But getting back to what you just said, yeah, there's a fine line that the film doesn't discuss of, like the danger in just saying, well, I believe in this and this makes me happy because then you get into conversations about religion and race and like superiority that this film, like I just wanted some examination of cast. And I think that that was Dr. Fodor's responsibility. It was mm -hmm. that character's responsibility to present that to these people, the, the danger in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like I can see that perhaps if this is a hoax, but it's never really... Plus, you know, when people are not being authentic they seem real fake and the irvings well that's my next note oh they were grating because mm -hmm. it's the 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 husband and wife and their daughter mm -hmm. and the husband seems real fake the wife was like oh <laughs> it was really unappealing nails to on at. chalkboard mm -hmm. the daughter though i did like her and then you mentioned i think the best scene in the movie is 
We're told the doctor's a ventriloquist, which is obviously suspicious. Then there's a moment when Minnie is in their house and she hears the daughter singing. So she goes into her room and Minnie, being a scientist, is like, talk to me more about this ventriloquist talent you have. And the daughter's explained to her. I thought the dialogue was a little clunky, but she says, um, she talks about throwing her voice and the way it sounds to us in the audience, like there's no way this girl is producing this sound. And then she's telling Minnie, because we hear Jeff's voice, like singing along with the lady, the, the daughter. So she tells Minnie, why don't you try? She's like, start singing. And, and it's very obvious that she's telling her that because then Jeff will sing. Mm -hmm. And he does. And Minnie's freaked out. And d that was like the, the vibe I wanted. Yeah. Like causing confusion, making us question. Yeah, making us question ourselves and our beliefs. Yeah, that, that, that is what should be unnerving. But this, this film never really gets there. So you also alluded to this. There are a few moments we see where, like earlier on, there's a, a, a gentleman who shares a story with Mini Driver. Maurice, the driver. Mm -hmm. About his experience with Jeff. And it seems like many people in the town have an experience with Jeff. And um, At his wife's funeral where basically Jeff the mongoose uh, recites Yates' dream of death. Because they had, so, so the husband and wife on her deathbed, they had said like, or on his deathbed, they had said that, with one story we hear, that this couple had come up with like a, a, like a secret code mm -hmm. that if, one, like if she or he were ever to like speak to her from beyond the grave, that she would know for sure that it's him because he has the pin number. Mm -hmm. So we see that happens to Simon, that Jeff tells Simon a phrase that his dad told him before his dad walked out of his life. So that gets Simon very upset but then of course he's trying to rationalize it like well i'm kind of a notable person and maybe there was an article about my dad not being a part of my life so it's really easy to make an assumption but again i wanted more of that we can see the unraveling of the scientist it moves very quickly because it moves it's from one scene to the next that he just loses it mm -hmm. um and i enjoy seeing christopher lloyd i didn't think he had anything to do Oh, that was my next note. The, the, uh, the highlight is seeing Christopher Lloyd. Uh, although the final scene where the two do scientists uh, reconvene, I thought that dialogue and the exchange was real stiff. It's such an odd scene to end it on as well. Because then we get... The, the, there's suggested some sexual tension between Anne and Nandor, uh, which after on the train ride home from the Isle of Man, she said, I'm going to tender my resignation. And then they kind of, she, she ends up getting herself a raise and uh, something else that she wanted. Well, that was a weird scene. And I, and I do think that the sexual tension between, it's very odd. And then the ride home on the train, he's begging her not to leave. And she says, well, I want a raise. And I want a letter of introduction to this other scientist she wants to work for, which I thought was weird. Like, mm -hmm. if you want me to stay, like... <laughs> If, if I want you to stay, why would I write you a letter to potentially work for someone else? And then she wants him to admit Jeff is real. That there's a possibility that Jeff... There's a possibility. There. And he says no. But she still agrees to stay working but for But we him. know better because he got scratched on the arm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Very interesting. I think I'm, I'm personally more interested in uh, learning more about Nandor Fodor as a real life human of the world. But uh, the, to me, this was very, just, this was very clearly a hoax. Even if it is, and I, I don't think it's well enough done for me to want to think about it. Uh, it, it just felt very basic. Mm -hmm. And the tone is like, I was just left unsatisfied. That being said, I, there's some cool people in it. Yes. I like how the film looks. I think the basic story is interesting. I could see it like if I had watched this on a plane, I would think it's okay. Sure. sure. <laughs> As it is though, what would you give it? Two. Yeah, I would give it two out of five. And I think it's interesting that this is coming out the same week as Slaughterhouse. Oh. Flaws and Mongoose. <laughs> Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>